Hi, it's Jan Beta, and I'm back in the new lab here. Um, yeah, last video I mounted this Commodore 64, which is it's in pieces at the moment. Uh, I wanted to access the board. Um, I modded this Commodore 64 to have two DC to DC converters instead of the regular um, linear voltage regulators that are in there. And I made some measurements with my scope, the trusty old one you see on the bottom there. Uh, as you can see, I have taken out the slightly newer scope. I think it's from the 90s, the other one's from the 70s, so it's ancient. This one is slightly um, easier to handle, the top one, and uh, it has an auto set function which uh, comes in pretty handy for what I'm about to do. Um, I got quite a lot of comments for the last video, and uh, as some of you very rightly so pointed out, uh, was that I didn't use the scope right to um, really measure the ripple and noise that comes out of those uh, these regulators. So I'm going to do it uh, again and try to do it right and also talk about my uh, experience that I had with this thing that I tested for a bit and answer some of the questions that came up in the comments below the old video. Um, I'm gonna link that video in here in the corner so you can conveniently watch it again or watch it for the first time, which I recommend because this is a follow-up video to that video. So here's the little fellas, which are the modern switching DC to DC converters and um, as I pointed out in the last video and as many of you pointed out again, these are um, good ones, uh, but they still um, have some high frequency noise coming out of the output because um, that's the nature of um, switching power supplies, which these are basically, um, is that they are switching at a pretty high frequency and you can see that ripple, which is usually just a couple of millivolts uh, and shouldn't matter much to the, the old ICs on here uh, in a pretty high frequency, a couple of megahertz usually, I think. Um, so I'm going to try to measure that again with the slightly newer scope and uh, slightly uh, more smart settings than last time. Last time I just uh, measured DC and um, had the, um, the vertical um, axis set to a couple of volts, I think two volts or something like that. So you could see that there are five volts coming out of this one and 12 volts out of this one, but you couldn't really see any um, of the high frequency ripple because the settings were a bit off. <laughs> I apologize, I'm not an, an expert on anything really, but uh, uh, yeah, I try and learn every time I do this. So uh, I learned that I can visualize a high frequency ripple with uh, the AC setting instead of the DC setting and I'm going to um, set the volts per division for a couple of millivolts or rather use the auto set uh, mode on my scope here. So yeah, that's basically what I'm going to do now, I guess. And as some of you pointed out, um, if you are doing something like this, there are, there are ways to do it very, very precisely and um, nicely. Uh, I am not going to get so deeply into that because I don't have much equipment. Um, one thing a couple of you pointed out is that you have to, to use a very short um, ground wire. I have this one which basically acts as an antenna and picks up um, all the uh, noise that's in the air anyway. So we're going to see that on the scope, but we're also going to see the noise coming from the converter. Um, yeah, basically what you ca could do, I could um, put a little um, wire on there and use the um, metal part here as my ground, which is basically what is connected to this anyway, um, the little tip as my, the point I'm going to measure. So, but I'm not gonna, I'm just going to use this and uh, see about what uh, we can see on the scope. So uh, 
Yeah. What some of you also pointed out is that I should measure it on the chips themselves also to see what uh, arrives there. Which makes sense, of course, because uh, yeah, that's where the voltages should go. And as I pointed out in the last video, what they these um, regulators, usually regulators, and now these DC to DC converters are powering is the VIC2 chip, which is the video chip, which gets pretty warm, <laughs> and uh, the SID chip, which is up here on this board revision. Whoa, okay, let's do that. And then I'm going to tell you about some of my experiences here. So I am going to connect the ground uh, to the shielding here, which is which is an even longer ground connection, I know. And uh, then I'm going to touch the output, which is the the rightmost pin, or the in this direction, the pin in this direction. And we are going to see some. Okay, let me show you the scope. Okay, so there's the scope. I'm going to scope the. Output of the 5 volt converter. I put this into auto set. And as you can see, what we are seeing here is. Uh, I can put this to. This is our. There's a, there's a little wave in there. And the ripple is this high frequency stuff, which is pretty high frequency. Let's see. Uh, one. It's yeah, it's about I think it's it's in the it's above fifty megahertz I guess. Pretty pretty high frequency, especially um considering this is pretty old electronics. Um so and we can put this into DC and it should read Five volts DC. So this is this is approximately what I did last time, I guess. Um, one division, as you can see here, is two volts, so it's two four and a bit over half a division, so it's a bit over five volts, which is pretty much fine. And I guess the high frequency ripple won't affect the uh, the. Uh, chips much. So to measure the other one I have to turn the board around I guess. So and here we are at the um, 12 volt regulator. This is the output. And as you can see yeah, we have quite the same behavior there. Roughly like uh, 20 millivolts or something like that of uh, Ripple and noise, which is approximately what is um, given in the data sheets for these regulators, and which is pretty, pretty impressive, I guess. It's pretty nice for a switching um, regulator. So it's not much. It's pretty high frequency, and uh, yeah, I think it doesn't harm the um, ICs much. Let's look at what arrives at the VIC two itself. From there. Okay, so this is pin uh, 40, which is the 5 volts. Okay, so this is uh, a bit noisier. This is quite a bit noisier. Okay. So this is the noise that comes from the. This is. The, um, the 5 volt pin on the PLA, which is fed by my um, power supply, which is the one I built in a video before. I will link that in, in the corner. Um, I built that myself and it uses a 5 volt switching power supply for the 5 volt rail, which I haven't had any problems with. Uh, so that should be fine. It's a pretty good 5 volt power supply, but it's still noisier than the. 5 volt supply from our DC to DC converters, which is this here. So let's see, and the um, 12 volts on the VIC2 should be on pin 13, so we're counting. <gasps> 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This should be the pin. Yeah, and that's 
don't forget, this should be 12 volts. Let's switch this to DC. Uh, and it's 12 volts. This is 5 volts per division, so 10 and a bit over 12. This should be 1 division, 5 volts. Yeah, and it's pretty close to 1 division. So, and I uh, played games on this Commodore 64. I tested it for quite a while. Doesn't get any hotter than normal. These stay really, really cool. These are uh, not even. These are at room temperature, basically. They are not even getting slightly warm or anything. The chips get as warm as before. I don't have the same board revision as a working board at the moment. Uh, I am going to repair one and make a proper um, comparison video with, with all the uh, temperatures and stuff. Uh, yeah, what I can tell you is it doesn't get any warmer than usual as far as I can tell. And I had this running for hours uh, with the demo looping. And uh, yeah, everything behaved just like normal, except one thing. Let me show you. And I, I really don't, I don't really know where it comes from, but it must have something to do with the, the new um, switching converters. Let me show you what it does when I turn it off, or rather, listen to what it does. It does two little uh, farting noises, so I'd like to refer to them. The SID seems to react in some way to the voltages. And um, yeah, let me show you on the scope. So this is the 12 volts supply on the SID. Turning it on. Now I'm turning it off. And there's a jump. So let me, let this, let me put this into DC. And put it into something slightly more visible, like so. So there's our, that's our 12 volts there, 12 volts. Now that's a DC setting, I'm aware of that. Let me switch it off. And that's a slight jump in voltage. And I think, so okay, this is the 5 volts regulator. And it's just staying straight when I turn it off. Turn it on again, turn it off. I suspect it has something to do with the uh, with the 12 volt regulator because it's the main power source for the SID, I guess. Okay, so this is again, it's totally unscientific and everything, but if you excuse me. So there's our 12 volts from the regulator. No, I'm turning it off. And there we are. This is, there's a switching noise from the 12 volts that is uh, transported to our SID. Yeah, and it's coming from the 12 volts. So, hmm, what am I going to do about this? So here's a close up of what I see on the 12 volts regulator when I turn the Commodore 64 on and off. So turning it on, there's our 12 volts, it's all beautiful and as smooth as we, we could ex expect. And then I'm turning it off. Yeah, and it's definitely coming from this. It's, it is the little regulator there. And I wonder, I think, what I'm going to do about this is to put in a 12 volt linear regulator instead of the 12 volt uh, switching regulator and see if this, that changes anything. Okay, so here's the plan. Uh, put in a 12 volt linear regulator again because it makes sense because the 12 volt regulator doesn't get anywhere near as hot as the um, 5 volt regulator that's in there and the 5 volt regulator definitely is the um, one to replace if you want to bring the um, temperature down inside the case which is 
the main purpose of this mod, um, the 7812 and 7805 regulators, linear regulators, are probably, they are lasting quite a long time, uh, but they significantly uh, heat up in use. The 12 volt regulator doesn't do s that so much because it only draws very little current, I guess. Uh, the 5 volt regulator heats up quite a bit. Don't really know if this DC to DC converter is broken because the other one doesn't do that if I turn it off. Yeah, I'm just gonna replace it with a with the regular linear regulator with a new one to be safe with one that is rated for 2 amps which I do, I did before I found these DC to DC converters. If any of you knows why this is as it is, uh, let me know in the comments and let's discuss this. I have no idea other than maybe the uh, converter is broken or there's something in the circuitry which um, prevents it from working correctly. Or another possibility, it draws too much current, which I don't believe. It's rated for half an amp and I don't think the ICs draw more than 300 milliamps or something like that, so it should be fine. Uh, I am going to make some measurements as soon as I have the other board with the same revision um, properly fixed. That's gonna make another video, I guess. Um, then I have two of the same revision, which I can compare directly. So for now, I'm going to desolder the 12 volts regulator and uh, switching converter <laughs> and solder in a regular 7812 uh, linear regulator. So these are the ones I'm using regularly on Commodore 64s, which are, I can just show you the box here, which is easier to read, um, 78S12, which are 2 ampere um, rated 7812s. I used these in a lot of Commodore 64 restorations and uh, the 78S05 and the 78S12 work. So, and if I'm not mistaken, this should resolve the issue of the uh, farts of uh, doom. <laughs> okay, let's, let's try. Fart it. Okay, turning this off. And we got rid of the farts. So, uh, yeah. Still re don't really know where they're coming from. Maybe... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you tell me. <laughs> I don't really know. I have to do more research on that. Um, might have something to do with the um, current rating on the switching uh, converter there. Maybe this stuff draws too much current from it. So this seems to be better. This seems to be much better. So, and as I said, um, I can't really compare this to anything. Because all I have are other revisions, uh, other board revisions. And um, for a proper comparison I should use um, the same revision, I guess. So I'm going to refurbish uh, Commodore 64 with the same revision and uh, do another video on this topic. Uh, so um, if you are doing this mod you can of course try the 12 volt regulator too but I I'm going to recommend uh, using a linear voltage regulator in that place. Uh, Otherwise, it seems to work fine, but the um, issue with the popping or farting sit is uh, kind of odd. Still don't know what, it, what it's coming from, but uh, yeah. So, so much for now. I'm going to give this another round of testing. 
it worked fine with the with the switching regulator, and um, it is going to work fine with this one, obviously, because it's uh, close to the original part, uh, as close as you can get. But a new, proper new linear regulator now that isn't getting as hot as the 5 volt one. It gets pretty warm. It's already getting a lot warmer than the uh, than the other one, the switching regulator, but it's going to be fine. So I'm going to leave that thing like this for now and I'm going to report if anything odd happens or if I find that something's not working. Won't guarantee for anything if you're doing these mods. Um, by the way, I use the 1.5 amp regulator. I think it's just using 300 milliamps or something like that on the 5 volt rail. Um, but I'm going to measure that when I am refurbishing the other uh, Commodore 64. Uh, yeah. So much for now. <laughs> this wasn't very scientific at all, but it was... Um, more scientifically accurate than the last video, I guess. So I apologize for any inconveniences caused for any machines harmed. Um, I'm doing this so you don't have to do it and try it. And um, yeah, this seems to be a working solution. 1.5 amp rated uh, Recom brand uh, switching regulator and uh, an ST micro uh, linear regulator for the 12 volt rail. But this seems to be quite fine. The picture quality and the sound quality wasn't affected at all. I couldn't f hear any difference at all. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to play some games with this after I have uh, reassembled it. And hope you enjoy your retro computers as much as I do. And maybe this was informative. Maybe you have any, uh, if you have any ideas on how to fix the issues, and uh, yeah, maybe you could slap some smoothing capacitors on the output of the 5 volt one and um, bring the ripple down to an absolute minimum. But I think you don't need to do that because um, it all looks hunky dory, and um, I don't think the VIC 2 is affected by anything that's in the um, uh, two digit megahertz range. Uh, so I think this is going to work fine. Hope you like this. Hope to see you again on my channel sometime. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Jan Beta. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.